Hey guys, what's up? Aru. So what are the chances that all the Fatui members are gonna be in Fontaine? Well, if you ask me, it's possible that Hoyo already shown that to us, and no one even bothered looking in the right spot, or as Lenny says, the right people. So welcome to another video of someone guilty. Are you guilty? Me? No. Never. This is gonna be about everything in the Overture Final Feast teaser, what every scene and dialogue might mean, and a theory for what might happen in 4.0. Some of the things I say will be speculation until official release, so be sure to read up some lore and prepare the salt grains. I'm Sam's as usual, let's get this show on the road. The scene starts with Freminet falling into the water? Question mark. Maybe he's unconscious or he's just plain zoning out. Freminet is a prominent diver of Fontaine. Freminet's name could be a nod to Seur Freminet, basically the inventor of compressed diving equipment, which fits his description as diving requires concentration, skill, and vast amounts of equipment knowledge. Something about Freminet is his titles and constellation, yearning for the unseen depths, and his constellation, automaton. Yearning for the unseen depths may mean that there's something under the water that nobody knows about. A secret of sorts that's been kept hidden for a long time. It can also be something forgotten, with unseen depths maybe pointing to something generally underneath. The underworld or the old world, which is both under the surface of the vat. Conria being a world under the surface and the old world which is buried and scattered all over the continent. There's also this ominous silhouette, which is maybe the unseen that no one knows about. Next is Automaton, which is likely his constellation. Maybe he knows something about ruin guards or technology. Maybe the clockwork automatons in Fontaine. Finally, Freminet's mission, which we have no idea what it actually is. Specific things like diving, unseen depths, yearning, and something about the water makes me think that he's Fontaine's version of Albedo. The symbols on his siblings' card art include a cog and an anchor. So maybe he's part of these groups, considering his constellation and his occupation. Next is Egeria, the lady speaking in Freminet's scene. We're basing this off of the names on the teaser description, by the way. Egeria's name is from, well, Egeria, regarded as the Roman water nymph. Maybe she's an oceanid or a baptismal bishop disguised as a human? She speaks of the original sin being the fairest, and to make the most of the final feast, as well as the sinner's curtain call. Three things of note. First, the original sin could be the taboo and the first sin committed long ago in the days of Enconomia and their destined path to temptation. There's also the sinner from Canterbury's story and the loom of fate which can control the world. If this is the original sin, then the sinner shouldn't have control of fate or has done something long ago, we don't know when, that is considered a sin. But it being the fairest could mean that it was the only act considered a proper sin and was properly judged. Everything else that was considered a sin could be a manipulated form and isn't a real sin. At least not in the eyes of Celestia and the Principles. Of which we don't know what is in Celestia and what the Sustainer as well as the Heavenly Principles themselves are upholding and what it exactly is. Next is Rindotir, the Great Sinner. Whoever made the name, we don't know. Rindotir dabbled in Chemia and its deepest forms creating Durin, the Abyss Wolves, and Albedo, as well as obtaining the Heart of Nabarius and disappearing. Maybe we'll get more info about the Heart and not just be a dead end lore that Hoyo forgot about. Second, the final feast, which we've heard from Piero. Not the Harbingers, not yet, but Piero. The only mentions of note that I could think of is the frenzied banquet and the feast that Piero speaks of way back in the interlude of The Wanderer. That and the long-fated rebellion that has already begun. Something that is destined to happen and Piero knows of it. He even calls it a banquet and a feast. Mentioning a predestined event twice, one from the first harbinger and the other from a person who seems to know about the same prophecy and then some. But this could mean all the harbingers are coming to Fontaine for a feast. All of them could also be sinners. And since it is all predestined by fate, they all know what is going to happen. This also ties in with the first point about the different sinners and fate. And even with Carrie Bear being the loom of fate. Not to mention Fontaine's possible twisted idea of judgment. 
Third is the sinner's curtain call, which I think connects to the veil of sin in the mocking mask, and by extension the knowledge of the cosmos obtained by the hanging sage in the silver twig. Secrets of the cosmos, sacred words, rune scribing as well as the veil of sin. Let's not forget to mention that the sage is from a kingdom established on a tree's roots, meaning that this kingdom is literally on the tree. The secrets of the cosmos can be interpreted as the secret to the sea of stars. Metaphors of outer space and the ocean or the sea have been used many times over in Genshin. Astrologers like Mona and Barbaloth use water as well as the same terminologies. The curtain call or the end of a scene where the curtains come is possibly a cover-up for the sins that the sinners committed. But who are these sinners? The Fatui? Who are fools? Carrie Bear and the Loom of Fate? Or Fontaine and the Masquerade of the Guilty? Honestly, who can say? What I can say is that you should hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that bell for more content. Thank you. Now let's talk about Linny and the mysterious voice. Seeing is believing, or at least that's what Linny wants you to think. And is also what the mysterious voice warns you about. Not only is history changing, but also people's perception of everything around them. The truth. Just like Linny changes the way your heart can perceive the truth, human hearts can be changed to perceive everything around them. It's all a show, and a show is nothing but a form of fiction and make-believe. The only way to know the truth of a magician's trick is to look behind the curtain, of which has already covered up the sinners in the final call. Navia has a geovision and is apparently climbing the walls of Fontaine for a photo shoot with Charlotte. Upon taking the photos, she is blown away by a wind and Charlotte picks out a photo, the second photo of which she was surprised by the wind. Removing that photo makes it imply that Navia flew of her own volition and it was her own power. An easy and catchy story for a journalist of the Steambird, the most renowned newspaper outlet in Tavat, with its journalists fabricating and lining the truth with lies. Information is power and if your information is incorrect or lined with lies, you've already lost. And in the land of Hydro and its masquerades, the truth is anything but. Navia's name is associated with the water goddess Nabia that evolved from the Galatian or Galician religion in the Iberian Peninsula, which is here. This is a reach but maybe she has Spanish or Portuguese references to Natlan. She also has many titles like the swimming one or the floating one or the lady of the valley. But right now it's still vague to go over just her name. Of course in creating the perfect show, everything must be carefully controlled. From the finest moments to the people in the crowds, which moves to Seguin and Brizzly. Let me know in the comments how to say their names, I have no idea. Anyway, Seguin has her name taken from Sigmund and the poems Ortnet and Wolf the Trick. A pretty varied story if you ask me and I wouldn't want to lengthen the entire analysis to explain their names. But Ortnet was aided by Alberic, who was the ruler of supernatural beings. Maybe it's a link to the Albury clan? Maybe not. Rotsley, or Risley, taken from the surname that dates all the way back to the 1100s, from the name Rotaslega and Rotesli estate. Risley's wolf insignia is similar to the ones in the magician triplet's card art. There's also the sound of sirens which leads me to think that both Risley and Siegvin are part of Fontaine's police force, since Fontaine was said to have a separate branch for people's safety. Carefully controlling the show needs the right time, the right place, and the right people. Now I like to think that this will be the main twist of Fontaine, where every character has an ulterior motive and is using someone else for their own goal while they themselves are being used at the same time. If Fontaine arc is gonna be a show, then we as travelers are going to see the extravagance of Fontaine's story as well as the more nuanced and morally gray situation of Fontaine. Highlighting the right people for a bit, Nouvellette and his position, Charlotte and the Steambird, Navia and her umbrella, Risley and Sigfin as the theoretical police force, Clorinde which we'll talk about in a bit as a sort of hunter or officer or maybe an assassin depending on which side you choose, Posalor as the Hydro Archon, the triplets and their acting talent, and Arlecchino as well as the House of Zani. Nouvellet is the Chief Justice of Fontaine, which we could see is maintaining control of the trial's flow at the end of the teaser. His equal scale insignia and motifs represent his role as the Chief Justice, 
no biases. His color scheme reminds me of Piero at first glance and is even more interesting when you look at his eyes. Conrian like eyes similar to Piero, Kaya, and Clotar. But it's a bit of a half possibility since his eyes are half open. Now I've been told that he might have relations to the baptismal bishops due to his eyes being a bit pinkish as well as the oceanids from his blue colors and overall design. Please go watch Roosevelt and Ashikai if you're interested in a bit more in-depth take on Nupalet. I'm sure they've already made it by the time of this post or they're already on their way. Regardless, go watch them. Gladia, I mean Clorinde, is this fine lady holding up a gun to you, the lovely viewers. She has an electro vision as well as an electro infused bullet from her flintlock pistol, so expect gun abilities from her once she is playable. Clorinde wears a pretty classic French soldier slash officer uniform, with the tell of being an officer or high ranking member through what I can assume as a bicorn worn sideways. It looks a lot like witch hunter hats or bloodborne pointed hats. Whatever it's called, it's cool, and I want more of it. Clorinde seems to be hunting either Nouvellette or Navia, depending on which you believe. Hunting Nouvellette means that she could be a sort of assassin or spy. Hunting Navia means that she's part of a police branch, likely Risley and Sigvin, or a bounty hunter group, which is an interesting take if there are two armed forces in Fontaine. Witch hunters hunting witches, bounty hunters in search of the guilty, or mercenaries that follows coin. The thunder sound and the storm on Navia's scene could mean that Clorinde is actually after Navia though. And even more if Charlotte took the pictures of her and gave it to Clorinde as information. Linny and Lynette are the magician duo that captured the hearts of their audiences with their fancy tricks and skilled manipulation of a show. Lynette being Felis Alba or White Cat and Linny being Felis Fuscus or Dusk slash Dark Cat. Lynette is a pretty quiet and sneaky character, the elegance in the shadow that for some reason has fights with vacuums, going on standby mode or needing to space out, by which she is kind of helped by Fremenet through speaking to the vacuum. Are they both robots or something? I don't know. She's also called the multi-function magic assistant, like a full feature washing machine or something. Anyway, of the three siblings, she's the only one who has mentions about someone watching them and then the gaze quickly disappearing. A harmless glance from an unknown source, likely from the most dangerous individual in Fontaine. Lenny is the more energetic among the siblings, named the Spectacle of Phantasmagoria. Phantasmagoria is to have a deceptive appearance, akin to being in a dream, and is created by imagination, frequently performing at the Opera Epicles, which seems to be a place where trials are held as well. The name Epicles could be from the word epiclesis, meaning invocation or when the mass calls down the Holy Spirit, which is a funny twist because of Farina's involvement. Judgment uses truth to deliver justice, while magic uses facade to reach people's hearts. Remember what I said about the mysterious voice? Truth can easily be changed once you reach people's hearts, and is precisely the key to both a good show and an altered reality. The same goes for the sinner calming Clotar's heart. Linny is also said to be an expert at stealing hearts, in both captivating the audience, claiming people's trust, and by extension, their weaknesses. Arlecchino, flexing what being a true actor is like, is a reminder that she is the best character, the most elusive and unpredictable, and also the best schemer and manipulator among everyone else. Her name means Harlequin, taking cues from Hell and the Devil of the theater. She is the best known Zanny, meaning trickster servant, who plots to ruin her master's plans. If you wish to know about Arlecchino, then here's a more in-depth video about her. Moving on, the Zanny and Arlecchino in the theater wear a dark mask, representing a monkey or a cat. The same goes for Linny and Lynette, who also seem to be magician cats, and the dark accents of her design represent that, while the red accents, as well as her cross-shaped eyes, represent the red horn from the Zanny mask, meaning the devil's cut off horn, a firm reminder that she is the devil of the theater. She corrects the twins, saying that they are first and foremost actors, and that actors must hone their craft to mesmerize the crowd, meaning to perfect their skills in manipulating the hearts of their audiences, and show them the facade that hides the actual truth. Shortly after, the camera pans around as eight silhouettes are passed by. There are currently nine active harbingers and there are eight silhouettes plus Arlecchino, so that's nine. Is Arlecchino gathering the harbingers in Fontaine or is she fabricating a scenario in Sneznaya for the other harbingers to see? 
She then snaps her fingers to close the lights, marking the end of the dazzling show and more importantly, showing her utmost control of the show. The snapping sound effect also seems like the sound of a lighter, which moves us to Purina, Posalor, maybe. In this scene, she's with Nouvellet, and we know from Nahida that she tries to be part of every trial. I mean, she looks hydro, so yeah, likely. She really does seem to be in the court just for the spectacle. She seems to be looking for a real twist or a surprise. And that's where we come in as the Traveler and the Outlander. A new variable of sorts, and will probably get the attention of both Forina and Nouvellet. Forina seems to have two different eyes, inverted shades and tints of blue. She might be the first Archon to have heterochromia, uh, until confirmation. There's also these glowing scales, which glow a bright blue, almost similar to Nouvellet's colors and Forina's right eye. Maybe the scales are only moved by Nouvellet and Forina. The photo she's burning could be the same photo taken by Charlotte, which could point to the twist that Navia didn't fly on her own, but because of the wind, which could mean that if the God of Justice isn't entertained, then she deems them guilty. And Nouvellet is trying to keep everything in order for the people's sake. Pretty scuffed trial if you ask me. The place they conduct the trial might be the opera Epicles as well, which is funny because Epiclesis is calling down the God which is Fosalor and opera is where you watch dramatic plays. So you basically need to entertain Forina to be considered innocent. Finally, Nouvellet and his seat compared to Farina. He's seated below Farina, which could mean that there is a higher level of authority than the Chief Justice, that is, the God of Justice. Or maybe the seat of Farina is just where the Hydro Archon sits in the Opera Epicles, and is just spectating and backseating every trial that she can. This is the judgment and facade duality that I think is happening to Fontaine, where truth is blocked out by spectacle and shows, and where judgment is overshadowed by stolen hearts and deceptive tricks. The Fontaine arc will truly be a masquerade of both the guilty and the hidden truth. And there we go, every small theory in my head about the latest teaser. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and for the outro people, comment below, does Farina like watching Ace Attorney or is she fed up with all the true crime documentaries? Now hopefully I can get that Planets video done. I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!